Okay, just a few things by way of demonstration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into 9K3 and I'm going to do a trace on Ethernet 1.1. I'm going to go into 9K3 and I'm going to do a trace on Ethernet 1.2. Drag these over. Then I'm going to go into Spine 202 and I'm going to do a trace on 1.1 and 1.2. Packet capture, not trace. I keep saying trace. And then one, two. So once that's open, what I want to do is I'm going to rearrange my screens here. So one, one on 201, one, two on 201. I've got one one on spine two oh two and one two on spine two oh two. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in here and change my filter. I'm gonna say I want to filter on VXLAN on all four of these. VXLAN. VXLAN and VXLAN. Now, here we see I'm seeing OSPF, so VXLAN, need to hit enter on each of these so the filters are actually engaged. So no VXLAN traffic going on whatsoever. Next thing I need to do is I'm going to go to LEAF 102, admin. NXOS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to go into the VNI, I'm sorry, the NVE, interface NVE 1, and I'm going to no shut it. Okay. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go to PC5 and PC6, so host 1 and host 2. And remember, show IP tells me this guy has an address of 202. And host one, show IP, has an address of 201. So if I wanted to ping from 192, 168, 100, 201 to 202 with a count of just one packet, let's see what happens. Now notice it goes through. Now interestingly enough, we see some output here. And notice we have in the configuration on 9K3, Ethernet 1.2, traffic actually came in we see the uh, uh, register, but right here, notice we've got configs. So ICMP went through these devices. Let's see if we can create a longer ping. So I'll come over here and I'm going to say um, 10 times. Now what we're seeing here is we see the pings traveling through the tunnel. And if we look at the configuration here, I'm testing from host 1, which is connected to leaf 101. Traffic is actually coming in on leaf 3. So I'm sorry, spine uh, 9K3, which is 201. And we see it's coming in on E9K4, Ethernet 11. So we can see that this is actually inside of the tunnel. I'm looking specifically at VXLAN, and we can see the encapsulation process here. Notice it's ICMP. And what I want to call your attention to here is, is you'll notice that we have an ARP. And if we look at that ARP, notice it's coming from 10.1.100.101, and it's destined to 239.999. So what you're seeing here is a manifestation of the fact that our devices are actually using 
the multi-destination configuration inside of the underlay that we built running OSPF. So I highly recommend everybody fire up Wireshark, everybody fire up Viral, uh, EVNG, whatever emulation software you want to run, and see if you can actually go through and experience what I've experienced and see if you can actually see the events as they transpire as it relates to our control plane configuration. Now by control plane, I mean, remember, we don't have, right now, EVPN is not running, and that is going to be the dedicated control plane configuration, and it's going to allow us to be able to um, do things better at scale. So Flood and Learn is just one little itty bitty piece of the overall VXLAN configuration or the overall VXLAN puzzle. And I want us to be able to put things together step by step and go through and look at every element and every component. It's all about the theory. Whenever you're taking a test and you're going to be asked questions about diagnostics or design, it is going to be absolutely critical that you understand the underlying function of each of these individual mechanisms that allow these features to function and operate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an end to this particular lecture, and what we'll do is we'll move on to another Flood and Learn architecture, and that Flood and Learn architecture is going to use bidirectional PIM, and it's going to rely on something we discussed in our multicast conversations, and that is the idea of a phantom RP. But we've done enough to govern the, the function capabilities of the Anycast Rendezvous Point configuration as it relates to our devices. So with that being said, I'm Terry Vincent, and I'll see you guys in the next module.